In this video, I talk about how to plan your training. Now, this is one of my coach athlete members videos, which are exclusive content. And I'm showing you this one so that you can get an idea of the type of content that you'll find in that particular area. So if you're interested, head over to the channel's homepage and click on the membership button. Welcome to the latest coach athlete members video. In this one, I'm going to take a look at periodization and I'm going to go specifically into detail about how I plan my blocks and also why undulating periodization is superior in mine and many other coaches' opinions. Now, I have covered this in the past on the channel, but it's something that keeps coming up. So I'm going to go over it again, and I'm also going to look, as I've said, at the phasing of my training blocks. I'm going to start off with traditional linear periodization. Now, this is a concept that many of you guys often use, and I've heard it said by people that get in contact with me that linear periodization is easier to utilize. That's because you start from a big base and of more general preparation training and go more specific as you get towards the competition phases. This type of training originated in the former Soviet Union. However, in the last five to 10 years, it's been very much issued by the world's elite coaches. And there's a lot of research that actually indicates that it doesn't work. So Derek Everly, who's one of the foremost coaches, track and field coaches, has said that traditional stage methodologies are not ideal, especially for speed and power events. Why go back each year and train as if you are out of shape when two or three weeks before you were in the shape of your life? So that's something that you need to bear in mind, we need to bear in mind. Gary Winkler, another top American coach, and Matt Viev, Matt Viev being the guy that came up with a lot of periodization theory in the Soviet Union, again says that it doesn't work particularly for speed and power events. And he gives some pointers here on why and the volume. If you look at the reality of most speed and power events, the volume of training does not change too much throughout the course of the year. Hold that thought. Because when you look at, or when rather we look at my training, you'll see that the volume doesn't change that much. The intensity is what varies. If you are training speed and power, you need to be training qualitative movements, technique. And if you are training qualitative movements, there has to be an element of speed in the movement all the time. Again, hold that thought crucial. So we're not doing a big general preparation phase of generalist exercises. Rather, we're focusing on that qualitative movement and fast movements, as you've probably seen on my main channel with the type of work that we're doing at the moment. Training transfer is obviously something else that's crucial to getting your training planning right, making sure that the exercises that you give actually have an effect on your athletes. So here are some points here, again, raised by Derek Everly. Talking here about, for example, second point down, about weight training. Doing sprints will increase your step ups or squats, but he can't say the same or the opposite is true with quite as much confidence. So again, that's something that I bear in mind, that weight training is peripheral to the mainstay of your qualitative training movements. So your sprinting, your drills, your pitch work. Weight training in my case is there to maintain robustness and potentially for the older athletes, provide them with an element of performance enhancement. But I'll go on to that in another video and a little bit more in this one. Evely also indicates that you need to understand what amount of specific training will get an athlete into peak condition. For example, his sprinters he's worked out will get into a peak speed peak after 36 to 45 specific sessions. So that's something again that we as coaches have to bear in mind when and what will it take to get our athletes to peak. And again, that's something that is easier with block periodization, undulating periodization, i.e. to attain more seasonal peaks. He adds, complex methodologies which employ year-round speed work or much harder to employ, but pay bigger dividends. And that's because of the transfer, the speed and the qualitative elements. So when we look at my programs, you'll be able to see how that is achieved. I know that's something that many people do find difficult. Dan Paff, of course, one of the world's greatest track and field coaches. Some very important points here about programming. Dan says, generally programming is too dense. 
A good program should be able to shrink or expand and still work. The goal of a coach is to see how little your athletes can do and still be great. So basically he's looking at the minimum effective dose to bring about effective training change. We don't do things just to do things. Our training is very purposeful and mindful. So going back to Evely, it's all about making sure that the work is qualitative, that is a speed emphasis, and you're not doing things for the sake of it. So if you've been regularly following my channel and the coach member videos, you'll know that I use undulating periodization methodologies, where you always keep close to optimum performance, as the red line in this presentation indicates. Now I've given as an example how I start the training year as an exemplar as there are a lot of videos on the main channel at the moment about the type of training that I'm doing and as you can see I've made sure that what I'm doing is specific that I'm analyzing the needs of my athletes that I'm starting and finishing with speed power and technique and I'm not falling into the volume trap of course at the beginning of the training year there may be a need to do a little bit more volume to build up specific jump and sprint fitness but it's nowhere near like the traditional means whereby you might be doing tempo running lots of circuit training for example what i'm doing is very specific preparation and you're seeing some of the drills and activities that we do at the moment now i play all the parts of the long jump triple jump sprint jigsaw puzzle closely all the time so they can easily be put together so the takeoff power hip swing drills, drop jumps, run ups, takeoffs, accelerations, heel recovery work, eccentric drills, etc, etc. They're being constantly meshed together throughout the training periods, the training blocks, so that they bring about peak performance and ensure that the athlete is technically proficient and has greater speed and power to go with that technique and there's not going to be a mismatch between those elements you've got to make sure that each training block potentiates to the next and follows on to the next now there are videos on the channel in the coach member athlete section that look into that now this is what i want to focus on particularly in this video my training blocks i have 10 blocks across the training year and i've color coded them in oranges and reds due to the fact that I don't want to make it seem that anything is backed off from peak performance or optimized performance, I should say. So by color coding in hot colors, usually used for the goals at the end of a linear periodization program, you can see that I'm trying to keep everything turned up at a high intensity. So I use 10 blocks across the training year. Each lasts four to five weeks for simplicity. Now I've given a brief overview of what I include in each of these blocks on the left hand side of this slide. So you can pause and have a look and see exactly what I'm doing. I put for specific preparation phase one in October, eccentric focus. So that's the downhill steps, the downhill sprints, and also doing bar drills, resisted work, and hills and drills. More on the sequencing of blocks. So what I'm trying to do, as I'm indicating, is constantly elevate the potential, the performance potential of the sprinters and jumpers across these 10 blocks. So block five, the first peak, is the indoor season. Blocks nine and 10 are peaks in the outdoor season. With undulating periodization, you are able to maintain the peaks better across the year than with traditional periodization, where you may only have a six week window for peaking. By just moving forwards and backwards as you undulate your training across these phases, you're providing the jumper sprinter with a sound basis upon which to maintain high level performance across the training year in those three competitive phases. Here's one of my blocks in detail. Now I've done this, covered this in other coach athlete videos, so do take a look back at those. But suffice to say that this block utilizes the drills and units of drills that rotate across the training phases and the intensity and the volume of those drills alters from block to block so that we speed things up but we're always working from a high level of speed in the first place if that makes sense. I've included some of my weight training sessions here because that's something that I haven't covered in so much detail in the coach athlete member section but do take a look at this particular session to see the type of work that we are doing. As I said earlier, it's more complementary. It's a way of creating robustness 
and in the case of this particular session, potentially increasing performance. I have to say that all my SNC sessions, my weight training sessions, are complex ones in that they involve plyometrics, even sled pulls, for example, with weights. Capitalizing on potentiation is very crucial if you want to maximize the returns from your athlete's training. Some of my other SNC sessions, they're color coded, and if you go back to the training block, you'll see that the colors are on that training program to indicate which particular type of session we do. I did evolve my training sessions, my SNC sessions this year, so I will go through that or through those again in another video. Preconditioning has to be a constant inclusion in your training blocks, no matter if you're in peak season or the start of the training year. So we're always doing exercises to maintain robustness, strengthen the Achilles tendons, eccentric calf lowering, balance work, and through other drills on screen at the moment. These form the early units in a training session, and then we go more specific and quicker. But by con constantly including these pre-training drills, pre-conditioning drills, I'm trying to minimize injury risk and strengthen the athletes. More of my first three blocks of training, I've put my first six incidentally here again. So you'll see in overview roughly what I'm trying to achieve in these six blocks. A little bit more detail on my third training block. Again, I'll let you have a read and also go back to the relevant videos in the coach member section where I go into detail about how I plan training in those blocks. Fundamentals, obviously. I mean, this in a way references, reflects my entire methodology and the one that is the qualitative method that Winkler and Everly pointed out and Dan Path for that matter when I started this presentation. We're trying to optimize technique. We're trying to continuously develop speed. We're trying to increase power, maintaining of quality volume, improve takeoff capacity as, an ex as a specific example, and the maintenance of general power. So we're not too far behind the starting line at the beginning of the training year or in block three, for example, which would be around about December. So always progressing the key elements of long and triple jump training and sprint training that matter. More on the potentiation that I've talked about previously, selecting activities that work together to increase the neural response, fast twitch muscle fiber recruitment, motor unit recruitment of your athletes. So hopefully in this overview of how I plan training and why you should use an undulating periodization block methodology, you've got an understanding as to how it works and how the units work together across the blocks to phase the training ever increasingly upwards towards peak performance across three competitive phases. Unlike a linear model, where, as I've said, you may only get a six week peak period window by the undulating block methodology, you have a great chance of being able to maintain peak performance all year round. Well, in when it matters in the competition phases. And you're going to technically constantly be looking at improving your athletes and marrying the speed and power gains to their technique. If you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this particular video or any other ones in the Coach Athlete series, then do drop me an email. And many thanks for your continued support. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Training, planning and periodization can be a complex subject matter. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you'd like to gain access to more of this type of content, of which there are many videos on training blocks and phases and how to integrate them, then head over to the channel's homepage and click on the memberships button. And as usual, good luck with your training and any competitions that you've got coming up. I'm making this video at the end of 2023, so Happy New Year, and here's to lots of personal bests and great performances in the new year.